Hello everyone. Uh, this time around I want to talk briefly about a uh, television series that I've just marathoned on Netflix. Uh, it's called Van Helsing and I'm going to try to keep major spoilers out of this but you should be warned that I may end up spoiling some some plot point uh, along the way. I will avoid the major, spo major plot points in the finale and along the way but I may spoil some things that are coming. Now, the basic plot is, well, vampire apocalypse in Seattle. Uh, and that's perfectly uh, reasonable for a setup. Um, the basic idea, Yellowstone supervolcano goes off, puts enough crud in the air that the vampires that have been around for a while can come out during the day. They do, and they take over the world. Or at least, the parts of the world that we have seen so far. Uh, to be clear, the Yellowstone supervolcano is real. And if it went off, it would be catastrophic on the scale that they show in the, uh, in the series. In fact, it could be considerably worse. Uh, so... Uh, just to be clear, that part is actually believable. And because it's a vampire show, you have to accept that the vampires are there. So if the vampires were there, and they could suddenly go out in the daytime due to a supervolcano or some other MacGuffin, then it's perfectly reasonable that what happened in the show would happen. It's perfectly reasonable. Uh, now, in the show, the vampires clearly have a well-established culture and uh, means of operating, uh, things like that. It's clear. They have a history. Uh, they, they have uh, scenes uh, which pretty much clue you in to a lot of things in mythology, the vampire mythology. You get a pretty clear idea within the first few episodes what standard vampire traits these vampires have. They're not daywalkers like Bram Stoker's uh, original Dracula. Um, they do have enhanced strength and reflexes. They do drink blood and they do heal really fast, but they're not strictly immortal. They age. That's uh, a detail that's revealed later on uh, in the uh, in the uh, series, but it's not really spoiling anything. Uh, it's implied along the way that uh, the ancient ones are no longer with us, or what have you, and things like that. So uh, you've got that, and if they didn't age you would think that there would be a very substantial vampire overpopulation problem. Another thing is when you kill them, they leave behind a corpse and they stay dead. Uh, if you kill them sufficiently. Uh, a bullet to the brain can do it. Uh, removing their head can do it. Destroying their heart can do it. Basically anything that they can't heal from. Fast. Okay? Um... And that's, uh, uh, basically you do enough damage and you can kill them and they leave bodies behind. That means they're not just magical things that happen. They are, in fact, biological in some way. Uh, and I think the series is going for a purely biological explanation, although where the energy to heal that rapidly comes from uh, is beyond me, but obviously there is something going on there. Uh, the other bit of the setup is the main character has some vampire-like powers. Uh, fast healing, uh, that's the big one. Immunity to the bite of a vampire, and apparently her blood or her bite can turn a vampire human. Uh, that's all revealed in the first couple of episodes. 
So I'm not really spoiling anything there. The pilot and then the start of the uh, story. It actually explains uh, all of the setup like that uh, pretty quickly. And then it gets on with the characters. Now this is taking place initially in a vampire uh, controlled Seattle. And you know that's it makes sense. It centers on a group of people holed up in a hospital in the beginning, uh, which includes our main character who's been comatose essentially for three years and wakes up in the middle of a vampire attack on that particular uh, sanctuary and uh, ends up, you know, getting hurt and, you know, the vampire gets hurt and, you know, stuff moves along from there. Uh, basically, we end up with a group of people there. They have some conflicts. They have conflicts with others that show up. They, things happen. They need to go and get parts to fix their defenses. And it looks like we're going to have a, a nice, settled... Uh, well, a problem of the week. Uh, um, Event-based... A story from a home base and it works that way for uh, six episodes or so and then they get overrun and they leave Seattle and now it's roving and uh, it uh, it's but it's it works though the two halves have definitely have different flavor to them but it follows logically and it works uh, uh, you know, and not all of the characters that we start out with make it out. Not all of the characters that make it out make it to the end, and that's uh, that's important. Uh, you can probably guess which characters won't make it when you're watching it. You know, based on the, how story flows go and who's playing who and that sort of thing. But. It's still, you're rooting for some of these people to survive, and they don't. Uh, but the, the story itself focuses on the characters and their motivations and what they do to survive, which is obviously a motivation. But the vampires also are portrayed with motivations and a desire to survive and things like that. And... Uh, you know, it makes, it makes you think, really, who's the bad guy here? Uh, are the humans good guys because they're human? Are the vampires bad guys because they're vampires? Or is it more complicated than that? Is a human that's an absolute ass a good guy? Or a bad guy? Is a serial killer a good guy or a bad guy because he's human? Or because he's a serial killer? Or what? Is the serial killer that saved everybody's lives a really bad guy? Or is he just a guy who happens to be a serial killer? And, uh, you know, that's, that's the sort of uh, thing the, uh, the show wrestles with. Um, and consequences. It sure deals with consequences. Uh, is leaving a serial killer alive a good idea? Well, that is one of the things that comes up. And the consequences of the choice also come up. So... Uh, you know, I, I give the show real credit for really focusing on personal motivations and making the characters flawed. Like, this is not a show of archetypes. We don't have an archetypical villain. We don't have archetypical heroes. We just have people who happen to be there and happen to be on one side or the other of a particular conflict. And they don't make rational choices. They don't all make rational choices all of the time. 
And that is so refreshing. As a matter of fact, neither side of the uh, species divide makes rational choices every time. And some of what they do is perfectly irrational. There's factions among the vampires. There's groups uh, among the humans. There's, there's factions everywhere. There's people who get along or don't get along or get along now and don't get along. You've got the Quislings who collaborate with, uh, uh, with uh, the vampires who like their new lives. You've got the people that are forced to collaborate and are vilified for it. You've got the, uh, you've got the resistance types who are the freedom fighters. And you've got the people that are just rattling around trying to survive. And you've got the vampires uh, with their factions. And you've got the feral vampires who have uh, basically... Uh, well, they're basically animals, right? Uh, no higher, higher functioning. Uh, so, uh, and here's the thing. Uh, the vampires kill the ferals just like the humans kill the ferals. Uh, so, it's, uh, uh, you know, it, there's, it's, it's not all cut and dried. And there's hints of things that were going on before the action of the show starts that might not be so savory and that the vampires may not have been as secret as people might think. Um, that the, there, there were experiments going on and things like that. Uh, there's implications about the main character that aren't really completely uh, solidified even by the end of the first season. It's kind of nice, actually, that they got a second season. Is the, I think the second season will really cement what's going on. Now, I've been saying good things about the show, and I really do recommend it to people that like post-apocalyptic stories or vampire-type stories. Um, but it does have a couple of issues. Uh, one of the big issues is the desire to hold reveals to the end of the season actually made some things seem a little bit stilted. Um, and it made some characters seem less likable as a result. And some characters seemed less, well, just less because of the, ha ha, I know something and I'm not telling you thing. Um, and that does get a little bit annoying. And there's a bit of the, uh, 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 you know, convenient timing on things and things like that. And it uh, does actually uh, uh, take a little bit away from, from the pacing and the, the rest of the story. Uh, and there's a few things that are a little bit too convenient, uh, but that's going to happen. Right. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's there's so, a little bit of inconsistency in characterizations during, you know, like in fight sequences where or it seems inconsistent. It might be explained later. Um, and we don't really know enough about the motivations of some of the characters in the uh, uh, in, in the original group that we followed, so it, it will be interesting to see what they do with some of this in season two. Uh, it wasn't quite like Mr. Robot, where uh, they had uh, a clear end game, uh, you know, for uh, who was doing what, and and it went there. Uh, you know, with a bit of a mystery along the way, uh, this is actually a, a a horrific scenario that the characters are just trying to survive in. So it, you know, it's it's different that way. But the level of production is, if not quite there, uh, at the at the same as Mr. Robot, it is. 
pretty good. Uh, and I think part of it is because it is only 13 episodes in the first season. So they don't have another nine episodes of the typical 22 episode season that they have to fill. But I think they would have done better if they could have varied the length of the episodes a little bit, uh, like a Netflix only series can do. Uh, like instead of having uh, all the episodes have to be 42 minutes or whatever, if they could have had some of them be 49 or 50 and some of them be 38 or something like that, just you know, for, so they didn't have to stretch scenes and so on. But and I think there's a couple of bits where there was stuff cut for time that would have made it flow a little better. But still, all that aside, I think they've done a pretty good job, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do with season two. Uh, and I suspect that uh, even, uh, even the uneven uh, performances uh, at some points, uh, which may have been due to direction or script, will probably even out as well as the uh, main actors will have become familiar with their characters. So it, uh, it, it will be uh, very interesting to see where they intend to go with this. I'm hoping they've got a, a long-term plan here and they're not making it up as they go along because uh, this first season, it makes a pretty big promise. And... You know, I'm really hoping that, you know, they can, they can cover that promise that, uh, you know, they haven't, they haven't, uh, that they don't bounce the check, so to speak. Uh, I'm really hoping they can, they can uh, pull it off, that they, the payoff will be there. And I'm hoping they get enough seasons to do that and that they're smart enough to stock the show when they've told their story. Or that make sure that they have some other story they can go on with that feels natural. Anyway, uh, basically, uh, it's a it's a good show. Um, I won't say it's the absolute best show ever made. Uh, it probably it isn't actually, uh, but it's really good, and it has potential to get better. And I, I really hope the second season follows through on that. Especially now that they don't have to do all that work establishing Vanessa, the main character's backstory. Uh, now they can just add to it and it will actually improve things. And they've dealt with certain story arcs that were over, overarching everything in the first season. Anyway... If you're at all okay with post-apocalyptic vampire type stuff, uh, horror type stuff like that, uh, violent, gory stuff, so this is not good for uh, young children. Um, if you're okay with that, then give it a watch. Uh, it's, it's, it's well worth it. But make sure you stick out through, the, you watch three episodes, the first three three episodes don't watch the first episode and bail because you think you've got it sussed and the second episode is a flashback largely flashback the third episode is uh, the one where you, you can make the call whether uh, you think it's going to be worth watching or not um, I would recommend that you watch it but uh, make sure that you watch the first three if you're going to give it a shot. Uh, just so that you're giving it a fair shot. Uh, because the third episode, things start to gel as a series. And you start to get a feel for what's really going on. Anyway, uh, I, that's my recommendation on it. Uh, it's worth a watch. Um uh, and I do recommend that you stick with it at least to the halfway point and possibly, uh, you know, possibly even, you know, up to episode eight even, 
before you say, oh, well, this can't possibly be better because it, there is a marked shift in the uh, series with episode eight. And it looks like it was intentional as well. Uh, now, this is based on a or inspired by a graphic novel series, I believe. Uh, I haven't read the graphic novels, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know how it compares with the with the original uh, inspiration, but uh, it does stand well on its own. You don't have to be familiar with the graphic novels to to enjoy the show. There might be stuff in there that calls back to that and might fill in some blanks. But I wouldn't trust that the show is doing the same thing that the graphic novels did, even if that is the case. Anyway, uh, that's as much as I'm going to say on the show. If I say much more about it, I'll end up spoiling major plot points. And I'd rather avoid doing that. I just, just say again, my recommendation, if you're okay with the violence and the gore and the vampires in the post-apocalyptic setting, give it a shot. Uh, if you don't like it, you don't like it, but I think the series is put together pretty well. Anyway, that's all on that. Uh, if you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe and, and, and make sure that you also enable that, you know, click on that bell, enable notifications. Uh, and also, if you liked or didn't like the video, click on, on like or dislike. Uh, apparently, YouTube's algorithm has uh, changed on how, how it presents videos to people. Uh, so, uh, apparently, likes and dislikes uh, actually uh, impact that much more strongly now. Uh, it's a, possibly to be a little bit more... Uh, broad on what it presents as recommendations to people. Uh, I know there's been whining about uh, from some big uh, channels that they've had their viewership has dropped markedly as a result of whatever change it was. But anyway, if you like the video, press like. If you didn't like it, press dislike. I would prefer if you like it, but if you didn't like it, you didn't like it. I won't take it personally, or maybe I will. Doesn't matter whether you liked it or not. Doesn't affect me really. Uh, it's your opinion. So there you go. So anyway, uh, make sure to subscribe and make sure that you turn notifications on if you want an actual email notification that, uh, that I put up a video. And like or dislike the video. Anyway, uh, that's all for now. If you've watched this far, thanks for watching.